Hey, my name is Jeff here again. Time for another video. Um, recently, I had to travel a little south down to North Carolina where my father-in-law is who's going, you know, he's getting aged and having some problems. So my wife and I went down there and spent a couple of days with him getting some things taken care of and decided on our way home to hit a couple stores. Now, interesting, interesting, not interesting, weird story. My wife had it all planned out. She's like, look, we're going to leave a day earlier. We went down there a couple days earlier than we usually do. Made the weekend longer. Went down. She said, on the way back, we're going to hit these couple little small towns on our route back. And she said, we'll try to hit some, you know, uh, record stores. So the town right next to us, there was a record store. The town real close to that, there was a antique store. Um, there was another antique store. And then there was supposed to be, anyway. So we get in the car to leave that morning we look at the phone and we map out where to go to this record store in the first town up the road about an hour up the road into our trip and i go to their page and it says closed and i'm like what do you mean closed and then <laughs> so i went to their actual page and on facebook saw that they were in february they closed closed temporarily it said they don't know when they'll be back but closed. so all right scratch that idea nothing else in that first small town Hit the next antique store. We pulled up to this antique store on the side of the road. Big sign on the door said, Close Saturday, blah, blah, the day that we're there. It's normally open. They were closed this day. Okay. Thwarted again. We went to another antique store uh, a little bit further up the road, and it literally was just like a big concrete warehouse with some old furniture in it. It literally had nothing else. It was more like, anyway. Strike out, strike out, strike out. All right, fine. We're just going to go to Elizabeth City, which is the next big town on our way home. And we did find the record store there. So, went to that record store. They've been there for about two years. Told them where I was from. They were well, well aware of my area because they were only about an hour or so. A little over an hour from here. Anyway, so um, lots and lots of records. I will say... Prices were a bit much for new records. But I went through and stuck in through the um, the used stuff, which was hit or miss. They had some used stuff there that I'm like, really? I don't know about this. This is, you know, I mean, some of the prices I'm not getting. I don't, I don't understand the prices, but they had a whole bin of 50% off. They had a whole bin of uh, just, you know, $3, $2, $3. They had all kinds of segments. My wife went over and started flipping through the 50% off bin. And so that's where we started. And, um, and that's where I found a good chunk of what I've got. Now, she went through it, found a couple things brought to my attention. And I went back through it and found a lot of things that she would have had no clue about. So let's get into this. I'd never heard of this band, Striker. She picked this up because because it looked kind of rocky. She's like, "You ever heard of these?" I'm like, "No." I looked them up. They're on Arista Records. Um, one album, one and done. Uh, and so this was late '70s uh, hard rock. And I thought, yeah, I mean, it was like I, I forget the price on this one. Uh, it was like five dollars. So I'm like, okay. So we got that. I, I I went home and I listened to it. And I thought, okay, it's listed as glam heavy metal. This would have been in the late 70s. So if you think think of sweet bands like that, you know, sweet, Slade, things like that. So, as you know, it, it was kind of upbeat, hard rock and edgier stuff. So this was kind of a cool blind buy. Kept going from there. Um, I was looking through the regular stuff, but here's, here's another one. Oh, this is also the same store where I got the uh, Max Warrior. So that was the video I did earlier about whether I should open it. So same store, 50% off bin right there. This caught my eye. Shy or England Shy. Uh, shy England. England Shy. They changed their name. The first album was just Shy. This, then they changed it, I guess, because there's more than one Shy. Now, I just bought it based on the looks. I've heard the band name. Didn't know what I'd heard about them, but, you know, they look like that. This is a uh, gold stamp promo. You can see it's got the hype sticker right on the cover. And yeah, just what you would expect. Just uh, This is an overseas band, and it's just that type of, uh, you know, late 80s. Yeah, you know, just kind of a melodic, slight sleaze rock type stuff. Kind of, you know, heavy petting, 
Def Leopardish, maybe a little edgier than that. So yeah, well worth the buy. Now I got home and I was logging it in to Discogs and I looked at the, what else the band had out there because they probably have, you know, six or seven other albums out. And then I realized that this is the band that they have their first album of down at my local store. The first album, they don't look anything like this. They look like a bunch of kids in t-shirts. Um, but I remember the name Shy from that. And they have that album. Uh, I just don't know. I didn't buy it because maybe I just didn't think about it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back. It's probably still there. I've seen it there months and months and months. So I want to go back and get that because I listened a little bit of online and it would be nice to have, especially going along with this one. This is like their third or fourth album. Fourth, third or fourth album. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to go back and check for that at some point at my local store. Plus if the price is right. Um, the uh, That one was in the 50% bin. The Danny Joe Brown and the Danny Joe Brown band was in the 50% bin. Again, only a handful of dollars. Most everything in there was average 10 to 12 dollars so it was like five to six dollars 50 percent off so anyway dan joe brown of course singer from molly hatchet solo album type thing i listened to this the other day and it's you know it's not edgy edgy it's not molly hatchet edgy but it's not much far off it's it's southern rockish feeling uh acts now you know the 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 other two acts is offering and and nemesis are the two that you tend to that's when they kind of got popular. This is, I think, their second, first or second album, second album. So, you know, I thought, cool. My wife's like, I didn't know who that was. I'm like, I know. So I grabbed it. Again, just a couple dollars. The thing that about the store that I did notice is all these albums were in really good condition. Really good. Like, I don't know if he has a major cleaner, but uh, something that made him really shine and there's not really any scratches or anything on it. So definitely grab that. Uh, the rest of these were not in the 50% off bin. They were in the regular bins. I found them for a decent price and jumped on them. Because like I said, some of the prices on some of the used stuff was, I'm like, why would I pay $40 for a used album that I could buy a new copy of for 25? Some of it didn't make sense. I don't know if there was something about it. Anyway, Silent Night by um, Saga. I've been picking up whatever saga I could find. I had to kind of look this one up because I knew I had one by them that looked like this. But there's two covers that look similar. And this was not it. So grab this one. Um, yeah, again, I just in the, you know, most of these, most of these in the non-50% off, like the rest of them, most of the ones I bought were in the $10 to $12. So I grabbed that side. My little Canadian proggy type stuff. Uh, I'm going to skip this one. Zebra's first album, finally. I picked up their second album a few months ago. I've always been on the lookout for the first album. It seems like every time I find the first album, it's always beat up or, or it's too expensive. But he had one there, and it was in great condition, and it was a great price. And so I'm like, okay, yes, I will grab that. So I finally have that. I listened to that the other day because, honestly, I've heard bits and pieces. I've heard their, you know, their videos, their hit songs, their songs on the radio. That album is really uh, pretty uh, diverse. It's got the songs on the radio, but then they got like a song that's like uh, just bebopping type stuff. And very eclectic at times, but overall a really good experience. And this one was exciting to me but only because I've been looking at this album forever. Every time I find it, it's scratched all up. It's a great album. but And they did reissue it with bonus tracks. And I've been on the fence of whether I wanted to buy the reissue or the original. And then I started leaning more towards wanting to buy the original, but couldn't find one for a decent price. But I finally picked up the first Montrose album on vinyl. Price was phenomenal. It was in the teens. And the album looked new. The cover barely much. The cover, you know, I've seen these and they're all wrecked. And every time I find one, it's either really wrecked or costs more than it's worth the amount of money that it looks wrecked for. So... I was excited to get this one for that, and so I jumped on this. I had, I've, like I said, I've been looking for that for a long time. I have the CD and everything, but that's the first album with Sammy Hagar, his first album uh, before he went solo and everything. So that was exciting to get. And then the last two we found in the jazz section. I always kind of peruse that. My wife actually found these um, while I was looking in the other store. She came with this one, and she said, how about this? Pieces of a Dream Joyride. Pieces of a Dream is a band that my wife and I went to see in concert back in June, I believe it was. Enjoyable concert. So um, this is a second copy of one of their early albums on vinyl that I've ever run into. And so yeah, for a couple of dollars, and look, it's got the hype sticker, it's still in the shrink, but open. 
um, and it had the hype sticker. So that was really cool. So I said, sure, let's get that. This is a little different than like the other pieces of a dream on that I've got and all and or some of their more modern stuff in that these songs, almost all of them have, uh, you know, vocals. Whereas a lot of their stuff is instrumental, or at least a lot of stuff I've heard is instrumental. And pretty much everything they did in concert was instrumental. These are the early days, and they're pretty much all vocals. So it's a, a lot of jazzy, uh, AOR-ish, rhythm and blues-ish, soul type stuff. Still enjoyable, but, you know, I gave it a listen. And then I said, she always goes over, and she's like, uh, who else do you want? And we looked at Spyro Gyro, one of my favorites, and I said, Billy Cobham. She brought me all the Billy Cobham albums, and this is the only one that caught my eye, Magic. Now, I have Magic, but here's the thing. I listened to this album probably less than a month ago, and I realized that my copy is crackly, poppy. I only paid a few dollars for it, and I kept, and so literally a month ago, I thought, man, I really need to get another copy of Magic. It's not an album I see much in the wild. Of all the Billy Cobham albums I see, this is not one of them that I see. That's why when I saw it, when I bought that a couple years ago, it was out of it was out of necessity, out of desperation. I never see it. There it is. Let's buy it. It was like seven or eight dollars, seven dollars. And I got it home and I cleaned it up and it just it just crackles the whole time. And the music even doesn't always drown it up. So she brought me that. I said, Oh my goodness. I've been looking for a copy. Let's take a look at the at the condition. It looks shiny new. I brought it home and I dropped the needle on it and there's not a sound. Not a sound beyond the typical <coughs> occasional crackle. Ah, it was beautiful. Just sat back and listened to the album. I'm just like, yes. So I finally filled this hole of needing this. And so that was a great one. Now, I had this big stack and I thought, that's too many records. And, you know, this is blah, blah. My wife's like, oh, just buy them. It's your birthday. Because it was the week before my birthday. So she's just like, just, you know, buy them. It's your, it'll be like a birthday present. So I'm like... Okay, fine. So yeah, so it was kind of fun. Went down there and uh, got to see a little bit of the town down there and hit this record store. And so, yeah, sadly, there's not a lot of record stores between here and where my father lives in New Bern. So I will talk to you later. Rock on and rock hard.